Welcome back. If you have just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channels Television. A reminder of our top stories. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo asks African leaders to give priority to action that will eliminate conflicts in Africa as he addresses the AU summit in Addis Ababa. Federal government criticizes Cameroon over forceful repatriation of Nigerian refugees displaced by Boko Haram. INEC releases timetable for the recall of Kogi West Senator Dino Milai. And Pakistan mourns even further as death toll from tanker fire in Ahmedpur rises to over 200. Now, for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Please log on to m.channelstv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app gives you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you too can be a part of the news. Just install the app, then type and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Now, the Speaker of the Kano State House of Assembly, Honorable Kabiru Rurum, today resigned over corruption allegations. Mr. Rurum is accused of accepting bribe to the tune of 100 million naira to discontinue the probe of the Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II. The former Speaker, who had earlier denied the allegation, is accused of collecting the 100 million naira from a business mogul, but failed to share the money to the members. The House had begun investigation into the alleged embezzlement of funds by the Emir but later backed down. The lawmakers have in the meantime elected the majority leader of the Assembly, Abdullahi Atta, representing Fage constituency as the new speaker. Now to the resumed trial of Justice Sylvester Nguta, the third prosecution witness in the ongoing trial of the Supreme Court judge today told the Federal High Court in Abuja that the judge traveled to different countries using two different valid diplomatic passports. An immigration officer, Mr. Tanko Kutuna, also told the court that the defendant used different dates of birth to procure the diplomatic passports. After giving his testimony, the witness was not cross-examined before Justice So adjourned till October the 6th for cross-examination and further trial. The federal government is prosecuting Justice Nguta on a 14-count charge bordering on alleged money laundering and unlawful possession of two valid diplomatic passports. The offense, bordering on the alleged possession of the valid passports, is said to be contrary to Section 10 of the Immigration Act of 2015. Still on the judiciary, these seem not to be the best of times for the former governor of Adamawa State, retired Admiral Muratala Nyako, as an Abuja High Court today admitted more evidence against him from the EFCC for an alleged 29 billion naira fraud. One of the documents tendered by the 12th prosecution witness in court shows that the sum of 80 million naira was deposited in the name of a company allegedly used by the former governor to siphon state funds. The witness also tendered before the court copies of documents of financial transactions made by Admiral Iyako in some commercial banks within the country. The admiral has been prosecuted alongside his son, Senator Abdulaziz Nyako, and two others on a 37-count charge of alleged conspiracy, stealing, abuse of office, and money laundering. Finance Minister Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun has been throwing more light on the tax awareness initiative launched by the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. Mrs. Adeoshun explained on our morning show, Sunrise Daily, that the essence of the new tax scheme is to improve the revenue of the government and get a tighter grip on individuals who may want to evade tax. We now have the data. We actually engaged a team of experts to begin to trawl through data. And what we found was that in many, many cases, people's lifestyle, which should really be from their taxed income, did not correlate with their tax returns. So there was massive tax evasion. Uh, for example, we looked uh, at properties abroad. We looked at properties in high, area, high value areas. We looked at BVN. We found that some people's assets and lifestyle 
um, when compared to their tax returns. So give an example, you have somebody with five or six properties, but yet pay, have a tax clearance that shows they paid 150,000 naira for the year. So that's the sort of evasion on that sort of scale uh, from various sources. Technology has been very, very helpful in enabling us to build accurate financial profiles of Nigerians. So from BVN, from Forex records, from foreign property records, we also engaged uh, one of the world's leading uh, private investigation firms and they actually trace assets abroad. So it all started really with the, the fight against corruption. We were trying to trace stolen money and then they were coming back to us and saying, no, your problem is also untaxed money. A lot of money has gone out of Nigeria, bought properties in high scale areas uh, and they were giving us this data. So we then began to look very, very closely at the issue of tax compliance. And when we A different fora, Nigeria's finance minister, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, who was speaking there, had said that the nation's journey to bouncing back in terms of the economy is raising hopes that we will soon be out of recession. Citing GDP figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics and the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mrs. Adeoshun says she believes that the phase the nation is currently is almost stable. Now, joining us on the News at 10 to discuss these developments along with the tax initiative is the Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much. Now, uh, from your perspective, is Nigeria's economy out of the woods? Well, we are almost out of the woods as far as uh, the narrative or discussion on recession is concerned. That's when we talk about, I mean, discussing it academically. Okay. Uh, if, by, if by the next quarter, we're able to record positive GDP growth, and we are almost at that threshold, we'll have been out of recession. But the critical challenges of the economy still remains. The challenges of high costs of goods and services, both from the business perspective and from the citizen's perspective. Because if there is any major worry that the players in the economy have now and that the citizens have now is the high cost of goods and services, which are driven first by the high cost of energy, second by the challenges of trade policy. I'm talking about import policy, tariffs, import restrictions, and the rest of them. Third, by the challenge of infrastructure, transportation, and of course you have the issue of high cost of funds. So these are variables that we need to actually get the economy properly to its feet. So we need to address this to ensure that the economy properly gets back on its feet. So it's not enough to just academically Can get out of recession. We need to actually get the economy moving. Now, for, from the perspective of manufacturers, who yes. one would call your key constituency, as it were, yeah. um, are they also moving out of recession, do you think? They are. They are. Our confidence is gradually returning even to manufacturing. Uh, the challenges of uh, liquidity that you had in the foreign exchange market has eased significantly. Uh, and of course, some of the sales are improving. Confidence is returning. Then the inflows in terms of, you know, inflows of forex in and out of the economy is also improving. So to that extent, I will say that even the manufacturing sector is also gradually recovering, but certainly they are not there yet. Yeah, because it would appear as if there are still problems with capacity utilization, there are still problems in particular with, uh, you mentioned the export, uh, the import and export policies and so on. I, I wanted to zero in, for example, on Forex, even though you mentioned that. Yeah. Yes, the interventions have brought down the exchange rates, yeah. but yeah. they are still quite high. They are still quite high. And then and there are people talking about interest rates also. Interest rate is a very big issue because if you actually want to get the economy fully back on track, you need domestic investors to be part of it. Because if you don't have domestic investors at, in the mainstream of the economy, you cannot have an inclusive economy. And it is through inclusiveness that you can actually grow the economy, generate the desired multiplier effects, and create the kind of job that we need. But for the domestic investors to drive the economy, they need funds, they need capital. You can't easily drive an economy with an interest rate of 30%, 25%. In some cases for the SMEs, it's even well above 40, 50%. So interest rate is a major issue. 
although there's always this debate by the CBN that it will trigger inflation and all of that. But if you are faced with a choice between getting the economy to recover and exposing yourself to some, some element of inflation, you actually go for getting the economy to recover. Now, so uh, we need to do quite a lot to bring down the interest, interest rate. rate. Yeah. Now, you heard the finance minister talking about capturing more people under the tax uh, yeah. base, and I think the target is a billion dollars. Yeah. Um, will manufacturers, given the background you've just given, can they, first of all, in your view, do the manufacturers at this point pay taxes? And they, do they pay the adequate they, taxes? They are paying taxes. But again, you have to pay tax within what the law stipulates. And that is the caution I like to give as we drive for this tax revenue. Because the experience of those of us in business is that each time there is this aggressive drive for tax, uh, most of these operators go beyond the limits of even what the law says. We have that experience from the customs, for instance. We have the experience from regulatory agencies who come with all sorts of demands for fees. We have this kind of uh, challenges even from state governments and local governments. So these are issues. So whatever we want to do, it is good to bring a lot of people into tax, but it has to be done strictly within the confines of the tax laws, and it has to observe the principle of equity. Because in any tax administration, a cardinal principle that, that needs to be respected is the principle of equity in taxation. That is very key. It's on that note that we're going to have to leave it. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Yimuda Yusuf. Thank you very Director much. General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. First Republic politician, Alhaja Maitama Sule, has passed on at the age of 88. The elder statesman died on Sunday night at a hospital in the Egyptian capital, Cairo. According to the Cairo State Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Garba, the body of the late Denman Sanin Kano is expected to arrive in Nigeria tomorrow, July the 4th, and is to be buried on the same day. The late Mohamed Sule was former Nigerian permanent representative to the United Nations, a former minister of petroleum, a federal commissioner of public complaints, a position that made him the nation's pioneer ombudsman, among several others. I have a dream that Nigeria will be truly united one day. I have a dream that Nigeria will have a buoyant, a strong economy. I have a dream that Nigeria will have the political clout that will enable her to lead the rest of Africa and the blacks all over the world. I have a dream that Nigerians will come to regard one another as their brother's keepers. Meanwhile, the president has commiserated with Nigerians over the death of elder statesman Laji Maitama Sule. In a letter personally signed by G General Muhammad Buhari to the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Gandaje, he described the death of the patriarch as a heavy loss to the country. President Muhammad Buhari says, In my discussions with Maitama Sule, I greatly valued his counsel, and I never ceased to be amazed by his concern for the country over his personal interests. In the letter, President Buhari also commended the memory of Alhaji Maitama Sule's service to the country as one not tainted with the remotest hint of scandal. When the news of 10 returns, Arik Air launches new customer service care unit. Do stay on with us.